Hello, I'm James George and this is Web Design Blog and this week I'm going to talk about XML sitemaps. Now, um, as far as XML sitemaps are concerned, they are basically the data that uh, search engines use to crawl your site and see what kind of content is contained on there. Last week I talked about uh, using Yoast for uh, search engine optimization and how awesome it is. And one of the features inside of Yoast uh, is uh, the third one down, well fourth one down is XML sitemaps. And you can enable XML sitemap functionality and this will tell you where your XML sitemap is for the site. And so uh, What's important here is that you know where to find it and you can submit it for your own site. And so what happens is you can go to Webmaster Tools, Google, you know, Webmaster Tools, and you know, like I have a list of sites here, and so this is uh this is for my site, G Squared Studios and you have sitemaps here and this tells you how many uh, URLs are submitted and how many are indexed and so from here you can view your sitemap data and you can also add or test your sitemap and so from here um, you know is the link of where your sitemap can be found and so that's where this data comes from so when you export your or you get your link for your sitemap you can link it to webmaster tools and you can view your data via these sitemaps and it also allows google to crawl and index your site and so this is very important for seo and i have actually seen a because a lot of people don't think to do this they just wait for google to hopefully index your website which is um, you know you can either uh, hope that food lands on the kitchen table or you can go out and get dinner you know that's that's the way I look at it and so um, it, you know being a little more aggressive with your SEO uh, can help you see results a little quicker and so that is true for my site because uh, I saw my site rise uh, in the search engine rankings uh, rather quickly um, the more content I added and uh, when I uh, started submitting my sitemap on a regular basis. Now, when you are when you're submitting your sitemap, it's important to remember that you don't want to do this every day. Google doesn't like that. Google's not going to do that, and you're just wasting your time. A, a, a rule of thumb for uh, submitting your sitemap for your websites, especially if you run a blog or something like that, is to regularly submit it once per month. This will give uh, Google plenty of time to index it. It'll see the new content. It will update, you know, all of its data and algorithms and everything it needs to do, and uh, it'll crawl your site purposely looking for new content. And you should see. You know, at least a little increase in your rankings um, just from submitting your sitemap uh, manually. And, um, you know, there's all kinds of other data here uh, under web Webmaster Tools, but this is just one of the important things to do for all of your websites. And, you know, I just think it's, I just think it's great that uh, Yoast has this already built in for you. And so it's just another reason why I like Yoast uh, so much is because you can um, submit your sitemap and get your pages indexed. Because Yoast keeps track of all your pages anyway for SEO purposes. And uh, placing your tags and stuff via uh, the uh, templates pages that we went over last week. And so... Um, one of the things that you can do is via the sitemaps page you have control over uh, pinging Google and Bing and Yahoo and others um, you know search engines 
and then you can actually exclude things that you do not want to be indexed in your sitemap. And so, of course, you want your posts and pages, but maybe you don't want your media attachments uh, indexed. You know, that could be, uh, you could also exclude your different taxonomies. You know, it really just depends. I, I can't see why you would want to exclude really anything except for maybe personal pages. Like if you have a membership uh, website, you don't want the membership pages to be attempted to be um, indexed just because those are private and Google's probably going to be rejected from indexing them in the first place. They're probably going to have trouble and it might actually hurt your SEO. That's one case uh, scenario where um, indexing like a membership page or something like that that's private or it's locked uh, that may hurt you. Uh, just inadver inadvertently may hurt you. But it's good to, to know and keep in mind that you can exclude certain things from being indexed by uh, search engines like Google, Yahoo, Bing, uh, just via these controls. Well, that's it for this week. I'm James George, and this was Web Design Blog.